Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 5. Good evening and thank you for joining us for NBC 16 at 5. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. Track Town USA announced the Olympic trials for track and field are now postponed in Eugene in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. A statement by Track Town CEO Michael Riley says, quote, although it is not yet clear how long it may take to finalize a new date for the event, our local organizing committee stands ready to welcome the best athletes in the country to the University of Oregon's Hayward Field once a decision is reached. The trials were scheduled to take place at Hayward field this summer. Meanwhile, construction continues at Hayward Field at the University of Oregon. We spoke with Hoffman Construction, the general contractor for the project. The company tells us their timeline for finishing the stadium is still the same and it will be finished this year. There have been some concerns about social distancing with the amount of construction workers on this project. A spokesperson for the company says those issues have been addressed, which means certain construction activities will be adjusted. Coming up at 5.30, our Kelsey Christensen will be live from Hayward Field with more details. Coronavirus cases climbed to 211 and the death toll rises to eight. The city of Roseburg saw two new cases, bringing the total to three there. To break down the numbers, the majority of cases are still in Washington County with 76 and 32 in Marion County, followed by 25 cases in Multnomah County, 20 in Lynn, 17 in Clackamas County, 10 in Deschutes County, and now five in Lane County. Lane County has tested more than 200 residents for coronavirus, but health officials say more widespread testing is needed. Again, Lane County has five coronavirus cases and one death. Lane County Public Health spokesman Jason Davis says the recorded four cases in Lane County is very likely not an accurate number. Again, that's updated to five, but that number is not updated most likely due to limited testing. It's not accurate. Those are representing really the most severe cases. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we're still in the same position in terms of uh, not being able to do widespread testing throughout the county. Um, we are hoping that that situation improves. Davis says the city of Eugene and Lane County are about to send out new outreach teams to the homeless and unhoused in the community. Medical screenings will be part of their protocol as they do their checks. Officials are working to set up emergency centers in Eugene and Springfield for the unhoused. Oregon lawmakers are also working on a coronavirus relief package. This is video from today's meeting of the Joint Special Coronavirus Response Task Force. They're drawing up a list of proposals that could be considered by the full legislature in a special session as early as next week. But one lawmaker has a word of caution today. The money to provide relief is quickly drying up as coronavirus restrictions take a toll on the economy. The unfortunate reality is our budget. You know, we've been blessed recently to be able to have a wonderful budget forecast in the past. However, a reminder for everyone that our budget is built off of uh, anticipated revenue. And as our co-chair sitting in there could probably attest to, all that anticipated revenue is suddenly changing Lawmakers say there will likely be several special sessions called to deal with coronavirus over the next few months. President Trump now has a date in the books on when he wants to see the economy open again. Plus, Congress is reportedly much closer to passing a stimulus package. Political correspondent Scott Thuman tells us how some major concerns are growing. While the White House task force contemplated next moves to counter the coronavirus spread, President Trump took to the Rose Garden offering more insight in a town hall on the Fox News Channel explaining his position on a desire to reopen the country by Easter sooner than some predict is needed. It's not built to shut down. Our people are full of vim and vigor and energy. They don't want to be locked into a, a house or an apartment. You can destroy a country this way. And though some companies are teaming up, like Ford, 3M, and GE, to start building ventilators and respirators, it can't happen overnight. And in the meantime, despite deliveries like this one to New York City on Tuesday, the demand isn't being met. What am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? You pick the 26,000 people who are going to die because you only sent 400 ventilators. Tensions on Capitol Hill, too, where the Senate feverishly worked on roughly $2 trillion in emergency aid. Well, the president was in a good mood this morning. He is ready to make a deal. I think Secretary Mnuchin and Schumer and McConnell and others have done a really good job of getting us 
inside the five yard line now. Though with more than 600 deaths now nationwide, states looking to Washington for guidance say they're coming up short. Some of the messaging is pretty confusing, so we're just trying to take the best advice we can from the scientists and all the experts and making the decisions that we believe are necessary for our states. Meanwhile, more states took matters into their own hands today as Michigan, Indiana, Oregon and West Virginia became the latest to institute some version of a lockdown. On Capitol Hill, I'm Scott Thuman. And for the latest information about the coronavirus, make sure to visit our website, NBC16.com, our Facebook page at KMTR News, and download our app, KMTR News, on your mobile device. Perfect, thank you. We're going to be doing weather from here in our makeshift studio weather center for the time being. Not because I'm sick or anything. We just want to continue to promote social distancing within our own station and really reiterate to you guys at home that it's best to just stay home during these tough times. So having said that, if you were able to poke your head out the door today, it was nice and mild temperatures, at least through the southern Willamette Valley as we take a closer look, uh, really kind of in the mid 50s or low 50s, I should say. Anywhere from the mid to upper 40s for our daytime highs through the Willamette Valley and out towards the coast. We put a few raindrops into the rain gauge with anywhere about a tenth to a quarter of an inch seen across our area and radar and satellite over the past several hours showing just a few of those spotty rain showers hit and miss. But boy, a beautiful sight over the downtown Eugene area. Again, spotty rain showers are something that we will be continuing with for the overnight time frame tonight as temperatures fall back into the 30s. And we do it all over again tomorrow, but I am talking about a slight warm up in my extended forecast. I'll have those details in just a few minutes. All right, Josh, thank you for your help, making sure all of us stay safe here at work. Well, today is the first full day of Governor Kate Brown's stay at home order. People are being told to stay home and stay healthy. Now the Coos County Sheriff's Office search and rescue team wants to stress hiking safety. Search and rescue coordinator Brian Valencia says before you go, let someone know your plan. He also recommends not going alone and staying on designated trails. Even though being outside is great, social distancing still applies. This last weekend, we saw huge groups of people enjoying popular hiking trails and the beaches. And while that's great, and we encourage people to go out and enjoy the outdoors, certainly those guidelines need to be, need to be followed hey, of Jackie, keeping that, that space in between people. Valencia also says with 27 volunteer members on their team, they've had to modify their training and briefing styles to be more individual rather than accommodating to a large group. The order also shuts down arcades, barber shops, hair salons, gyms, fitness studios and more. Today looked like a Sunday morning in downtown Eugene with very light traffic and only a few businesses open. Owner Michelle Reed at the Jazzy Ladies Cafe says she's cut back her menu and taken additional steps to keep her staff of eight working. Despite the pandemic and restrictions, however, she says she's feeling the community support. I just really believe this is an amazing community and people have been so generous in tipping my staff and, you know, commenting on our Facebook posts about how they want to make sure we stay in business. So th that's just heartwarming. I appreciate it so much. Eugene Chamber of Commerce leaders have reached out to all their 1,200 members in recent days. They expect many small businesses will try to redirect their business model or market their goods in a different way. There's some regulations that they're they're coming up against that we need the government to be able to quickly override some of those regulatory burdens. So uh, I know that the, the county and the city are both incredibly active in, in answering the call as soon as they get a call from somebody. Layoffs are already starting to hit the local economy from the coronavirus pandemic. Jasper's food management has announced temporary layoffs, including 44 people in Eugene, 11 in Roseburg and six in Cottage Grove. United Way of Lane County launched a community response fund to assist those affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Pacific Source Health Plans helped launch the program with a $50,000 donation. The funds will be given to nonprofits offering food relief, child health care assistance, among other services to vulnerable populations. Nonprofits can apply for financial assistance up to $2,500 on the United Way website. Now, they do plan to release funds every other week and are inviting the community to donate to the fund with no administrative costs taken from donations. To find out more information, you can visit our website, NBC16.com.
Coming up next on NBC 16 at 5, China is expected to end their lockdown, how they're now trying to boost the economy.